Hello there, my name is Joanna Donnelly. I'm a meteorologist and a weather forecaster at MetAir in Ireland's National Weather Service. And on World Environment Day, we're taking a look at the weather and climate of Ireland and having a think about what a changing climate means for the future of Ireland's weather and for the world too. This graphic shows the change in the temperature in Ireland over the last 100 years. The redder values show temperatures above the expected normal for the time of year. Now, I like to tell people that Ireland has a climate much like Goldilocks's porridge. Not too hot, not too cold, not too wet, not too dry, it's not too stormy either. Now, some people don't necessarily agree with me on that uh, observation. They like to complain about the weather. But here's Keith Lampkin. He's a friend of mine and my colleague at Met Air, and he's going to tell you First of all, about the role Met Erin has in helping to make Ireland more climate prepared. And he's going to tell you what exactly is the difference between the weather and the climate. Hello, my name is Keith Lampkin, and I'm the senior climatologist at Met Erin. And it's here at our headquarters in Glasnevin that we monitor and analyse Ireland's climate. As I hope to show you in this series of three short videos, by analysing Ireland's past climate, and predicting likely changes to our future climate while helping to make Ireland weather and climate prepared. So firstly, what is the difference between weather and climate? Well, weather is what we experience every day. And in Ireland, we know we get very changeable weather compared to many other parts of the world. And this is largely due to prevailing winds blowing in active weather systems in from the Atlantic. But when we talk about climate, we mean the average weather over many years or the typical normal conditions we'd expect to find in a particular region at a certain time of year. It's part of Madeira's role to help those who provide services in climate sensitive sectors, such as transport, health and water, by providing advice based on the latest climate science. This enables them to make important decisions when providing their services to people. But how do we ensure we're providing the most accurate climate information? MetAaron is an active member of the United Nations World Meteorological Organization. This is a global governing body that coordinates climate and weather activities worldwide. In addition, we're members of a number of European climate expert teams. And it's here that we work with other climate agencies to ensure that our climate science is consistent across borders. So how do we observe and monitor Ireland's climate? And how can you help contribute? And what changes do we expect to see in the future? Now, before we start predicting the future, we really need to know what's going on right now. That's what we have, the observation network. There's an observation network across Ireland, Europe and the world indeed. And that's going to tell us the information. We need to know what's going on right now. We also need climate data. And that's the information relating to the past, the near past and the very, very distant past too. Today we're coming from Phoenix Park, one of our many weather stations that's helping to tell the story of Ireland's climate. Accurate weather measurements have been made by dedicated observers all throughout Ireland since the middle of the 1800s. However, few really appreciate the level of effort this involves. Until the recent automation of our stations, weather stations just like the one here at Phoenix Park would have been staffed by a team of six Met Aaron observers. Some of these observers dedicating their entire careers, 40 years, to making those measurements. Added to this, the hundreds of volunteer observers who have been recording observations for decades, and the fact that all of this data has to be centrally collected and quality controlled. And as we upgrade instrumentation, we have to reconcile the data between the old instrument and the new instrument. On top of this, there's vast amounts of past historic climate data that have and still have to be digitized in order to be used in modern climate studies. And we include all of this, we begin to get a feel of the monumental effort it takes to produce long-term, reliable climate data. Thanks to the enormous efforts of our observers, the support teams, as well as modern measurement techniques, we can measure changes in Ireland's climate. Take, for example, the average annual temperature of Ireland over the last 100 years. The change in temperature is variable and complicated. But a simplistic examination of the average temperature suggests that it's about one degree warmer now than it was 100 years ago. So while this seems small, it's actually big enough for us to be able to see changes in our climate. 
It's the increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere caused by human activities that's increasing the temperature of our planet. In fact, what we'd consider normal climate now is different to what we would have considered normal climate to be 100 years ago. And by measuring that difference or change between these normal periods, we can calculate Ireland's climate change. Now, as well as working what is going to happen in the climate in the future, there are also people thinking about how we're going to live in the world where the climate may be different, very different uh, indeed, to what it is today. Keith is here again to tell us how we are working in Met Erin with planners to help make Ireland climate prepared. Met Erin, along with its partners at home and abroad, help develop and run climate models. These complex models are much like weather forecast models, but instead of using weather observations from days ago to help predict days ahead, they use slightly different science to take weather observations from decades ago to help predict decades ahead. Working with our friends at the Irish Centre for High-End Computing, global projections are localised to Ireland. This allows more details, such as Ireland's mountains, coasts, as well as other features to be included, potentially increasing the accuracy of these climate projections for Ireland. So these projections tell us that by mid-century, we would expect to see temperatures on average getting warmer. The growing season continue to get longer, with spring arriving on average even earlier. And with warmer air able to hold more moisture, there is potential for even more heavy rainfall events. So by knowing these likely changes, how can we use this to our best advantage? Well, there is a field of climate science called climate services that involves translating huge amounts of data from our models into a language that engineers and planners can use to make important decisions. Such as, how high should we build flood defense walls? What species of trees should we plant now on our forests so they're still suitable by mid-century? And how big should we build drainage on our road network so we can handle future downpours? All of these questions require specialized knowledge of our future climate. By advancing climate science, MedAero can help planners make important decisions to adapt to our changing climate. So while our government is responsible for leading in climate action, it's made Aaron's job to continue to support Ireland with the latest climate science, helping to make Ireland more climate prepared. Now, over the last few years, climate change has gone under a few different rebrands. They've changed the name. It used to be called global warming. And we found that people were a little bit confused by that terminology. They expected that that just meant that the temperature of the air, uh, air temperature is going to go up. And sure, who wouldn't like it to be a couple of degrees warmer here in Ireland anyway? But across the globe, increasing temperatures of the whole entire globe actually means a disruption to the global weather patterns. And that's why we've changed the name to include that change focus. It's now climate change. Indeed, it could be global climate change because we're looking at the patterns changing across the globe. Global weather patterns will be different to what they are at the moment. And that's why the new name is climate change and what we're trying to do today is highlight and be more climate prepared aware of what the climate here in Ireland is but indeed what the climate across the globe is and how that could be affected by global climate change. Now at the start of the industrial revolution man discovered that we could make engines that would do the work that we'd been previously doing by hand or maybe with the help of horses and the steam en engine was invented. Now the steam engine works by heating water to create steam, holding that steam under pressure and then that pressure builds up to move the various engines. Now it takes an awful lot of energy to heat water to release that steam and oil and coal burn hotter than wood and that's how we started to burn oil and coal and gas to the extent that now we're looking at a built up of the carbon in the atmosphere from burning all those fossil fuels that's increasing the amount of energy in the atmosphere and that's what's driving climate change now into the future. 
So when we look across the globe and we can make measurements of how much carbon is in the atmosphere now compared to what it was in the past, that increases the amount of carbon is trapping more heat into the atmosphere giving more energy to the storms. Now, hurricanes form over the oceans in late summer and early autumn when the oceans are at their hottest. With more energy in the oceans in the near future, climate scientists suspect that the hurricane seasons will start to be affected. Maybe more powerful storms, maybe more frequent storms, maybe storms affecting areas where they did not used to before. So going forward into the future is Ireland's temperate, or as I call it, the Goldilocks climate under threat now of becoming more influenced by stormy conditions. Maybe it'll become wetter or colder indeed as the global weather patterns change. But in other parts of the world, people are in much more vulnerable situation right now and into the near future to those changing global weather patterns in parts of the developing world where large populations depend on the arrival of the timely arrival of the monsoons to bring vital rains to their crops. People living in low lying lands in the tropics are incredibly vulnerable to the risks of rising sea levels. So it's really up to all of us to be aware of our place in combating climate change and making a good decisions and making sure we're at all times climate aware.